Hey YouTube and welcome back to Tell Samira. Today we'll be talking about traits of a narcissistic friend. So your friend may meet most of these traits or just a few of these traits. So let's go ahead and get into it. So a narcissistic friend, one way to spot the person is they will exaggerate their talents. They'll also they might exaggerate their beauty. What I mean by that is, let's say if you have a friend and she's a seamstress, she may be really good at what she does, but she may have a flaw in that she can't make clothes for certain body types. So let's say if she has someone that's about six foot three, She's making the dress and then the dress actually hits the person um, way up on the thigh. Now, everyone else can look at the dress and see that, oh my goodness, there's a glaring problem. She made this dress for someone that's 5'5 five, five or so. But the narcissistic friend is looking at the dress. Oh my God, how, oh, it's so great. Oh, you look so beautiful. They're just unable to see the flaw, you know, to them, to that narcissistic friend, she's just the best seamstress ever. There's no flaws. Perhaps the person grew an inch or two since she got the measurements for the dress, but there's no way that it could be uh, your narcissistic friend who has this problem. Also, uh, the friend tends to, exag to exaggerate so much that they need others to believe uh, the greatness of, of them. What I mean by that, if your friend is a great seamstress, she'll be constantly going around telling people, oh, you know, I'm so great um, at what I do. You know, uh, I'm just a very talented individual. Not only am I a seamstress, you know, I can uh, do hymns and alterations. You know, they're just very tend to be very full of themselves. Now, stay with me. That's not the only trait. That's one of the lighter, uh, one of the lighter things you'll see, but it, it actually gets more darker, I'll say. Uh, also, uh, one thing I've noticed too is that a narcissistic friend, they believe that they're better than others. What I mean by that is they think that because they're so talented or because they're so beautiful. And not all narcissists think they're beauty. It could be the, the skills that they have. So that's why I'm stressing talent as well. So that the skills or the beauty that they have is so far above others is that they feel that they can put others down. And another way that they put others down is saying like, for instance, oh, well, I'm so like your narcissistic friend may work with you. And she may think, oh, I'm just so good at work at customer service. I just can't handle when other people are not good, you know, and they don't answer the phone the way I would answer the phone. You know, I had, I worked with a narcissistic friend like this and what she would do since she thought she was so much smarter, more skilled. If she would talk to someone on the phone and they didn't give her the treatment she wanted, even if it wasn't disrespectful. Uh, to her, she would get very indignant with them and say things like, well, I don't, I, I don't know who taught you how to do customer service. I would never speak to someone like that. Where did you get your training? Put your manager on the phone. Manager now. You know, and the, the narcissistic friend wanted to make sure I was in the office. For some reason, she wanted to convince me that she was so great at customer service that she had to belittle other people. She needed a, me to be her audience to see her talk down to other people people. Another thing that I've noticed about narcissistic friends who are females, that is, is that some of them have this princess theme. What I mean, one narcissist I know likes to go on and on about um, how she was her father's favorite. She was the princess. I was daddy's princess, daddy's little girl. I, you know, I was just the favorite. You know, that's their way of saying that they felt that uh, they're, they're better than others. And she was telling me basically that she was the father's favorite. She was better than the other siblings in the father's eye. And since the father said it, well, of course, she was just better th than the other siblings. I also had another narcissistic friend who liked to call herself princess. And she was a religious narcissist. So she would say, oh, you know, she wasn't being haughty or expecting special favor. She just said that she was a princess because she was a child of God, which made her a princess. But however, once I got to know her, she exhibited a lot of the traits that I'm going to talk to you about regarding narcissism. 
So, uh, one thing um, I want to touch on before I move on regarding being better than uh, being better than others. Uh, narcissists they like to play mind games with you. They will tell you lies. They will say things to push your buttons, and I'll go into that more later. But really, they just like to be in control, and they're they're playing with you basically. And so they feel that if you don't notice that they're playing, well, something is wrong with you. You must be stupid. You're not as smart as them because if you are, you would see that they're clearly playing mind games with you, you know. And so since in their mind, since you're not as smart, you're naive, it's okay that they belittle you. It's okay that they criticize you and treat you wrong because they need to show you just how stupid you are. So they're going to make fun of you and they console themselves with it like, well, they're stupid anyway. And well, they're beneath me because if they knew any better, you know, they would see me for who I am. And the crazy thing is you as the friend, you're thinking, going into the relationship thinking this is an honest person. So it's not that you're stupid. You just don't see it because you you don't have this same mind, but they do. And so since they fe they're this way, they feel everyone is um, behaves as they do. So they feel that you should recognize uh, the game when it's in your face. Also, let's see. They deserve, let's see, narcissists, excuse me, they have a need for excessive admiration, meaning sometimes uh, they might need to be the center of attention no matter what's going, what's going on. They, if you're at a party, they want to bring the attention back to them, especially if it's a smaller gathering. So you might be at a family, family fun function with your friend and you'll notice that she is telling um, jokes. It might be what uh, might be sexual jokes anything just to bring the attention back to herself if it's off of her or if she's re really into her look she might start telling stories about you know how great you know great she looks and this and who's after her and you know all the attention from the males or she might also be a narcissist that likes to create drama to get attention so you might have met her child and you might not really like her child because this narcissist might have told you a lot of bad things about the child and later you might find out that these aren't true they'll tell you these sob stories just to make you think oh my goodness my narcissistic friend is going through so much with her child i can't understand why her child treats her this way it must suck to have a child like this and a narcissistic person that I know, uh, once we were all at a birthday party and everyone was singing happy birthday to the birthday person. And the narcissist started doing this Marilyn Monroe rendition. If you haven't seen it, uh, Marilyn Monroe singing to uh, President Kennedy, you might want to look that up. So the narcissist starts singing all loud and like seductive like and trying to sing above other people. And the other people at the party, the other women were just looking like, really? You know, the narcissist is so caught up in her world. She doesn't see that her need for this attention sometimes, she, I mean, she's overdoing it and people are catching on and looking like, is she really serious? But the narcissist didn't know that she was just trying to show us how great she was at singing. So she just kept going with it. So we suffered through it, but we got through it. Another thing is that uh, your narcissistic friend might think people are envious of her and she, you might also find her jealous. Uh, one narcissist I know, knew liked to go on and on about how um, all the men at the club were after her and uh, buying her drinks and the other women weren't dressed as cute as her and they were all jealous of her and the narcissist would keep going on telling me the story all the time. It's as if she was trying to ingrain and in, in, in bed in my head that yes, you know, wanted me to believe her tale of, yeah, she's so beautiful and people are jealous of her, you know, and it's like she just wouldn't stop every time the conversation was always back to other women that were jealous of her. But when you start to uh, get to know the narcissist, you'll see that that narcissist is actually jealous. Let's say, for instance, if something good happened to you, uh, you, you know, you get a great promotion at work and your narcissist, uh, maybe she's a stay at home mom, you know, and but her goal has always been to go to work. But she, the husband, you know, she felt the husband wouldn't allow it. So she stayed at home. So she might resent you because you're doing something that in your 
your field that you really like. So instead of her going out to get the job, she may come to you and say things like, well, if it wasn't for my husband, you know, I, I will go do the same thing as you, you know, so um, not all of us have the same opportunities. And you're thinking, well, uh, you know, if you really wanted to go out to do what I'm doing, you could do it too. Don't use, you know, your husband or your family or other excuses, but the narcissist tends to be jealous uh, of other people. Also, uh, and yeah, and that, and that's another big thing. They like to compare themselves with, with other women in, in different ways. A narcissist may also be entitled. They may think that they're just because you're friends that you owe them special favors. Like if you're, if you, if you do hair, they want, they might want a discount or they might want you to give them rides for free or, or even if they pay you, they, they expect you to wait at the grocery store, then take them to another place, then take them to pick up their kids. And they just really have no regard for your time because it's all about them. I, I even know narcissists who will lie about medical issues saying, um, you know, they need a CAT scan, they need an MRI. And when you talk to other people that, find, that know them, you'll find out, yeah, they do need them, but they were lying to you all saying that the, the insurance didn't cover it. And they're telling you, one friend, oh, they need $1,000. Can you help them with some money? And then they tell another friend it's $2,000. And it, you find out once you start talking to other friends, they know it's actually, they say, oh, they told me it was 500. So they'll lie and manipulate and exploit people even to get to get money. They feel that they're entitled. Or you might have a narcissistic friend who has a, adult children and the narcissist is not even a senior but has decided just to stop working because they don't want to. And now they want to put that pressure on their adult kids who probably are living paycheck to paycheck themselves to take care of the narcissist. And the narcissist, you will find during the conversation, the narcissist is basically telling you that she's using guilt trips on the kids because she just really believes she's entitled to have this uh, special treatment from her kids. Even if she treats the kids like crap, she feels that she's been, you know, she had the kids. And so now, you know, in her mind, she's greatest mother ever and they should be taking care of her and you the friend should be giving her, you know, free stuff, special treatment. If you have extra medical supplies, you know, di um, diabetes, what is it, diabetic needles, she's going to want those needles. You give her some, she's going to want more out the box. And when behind your back, I don't know why she didn't give me more. I she, I don't know what's up with her. She should have given me more. You, you, you can't satisfy a narcissist. Uh, she's never going to be satisfied no matter what you do. She's always going to feel like you should have given more. Why? Because you're her peon. She's greater. She's smarter than you. You're naive. You need to do what she wants you to do. Also, um, about narcissists. Sometimes, well, not sometimes, I find a lot that uh, narcissistic friends like to start arguments. And the reason they like to start the arguments is to gain control over you. They might not even disagree with you, but they will try to pretend, uh, the, the, play the devil's advocate, or just, they're trying to take a side just so they can purposefully, purposely, how did you say it, uh, upset you. You know, so the thing is, is then they, they like to see you defensive. We, we're reacting, as they call it, reacting versus responding. Reacting is um, you feel the need to defend yourself or you're over, over explaining things to the narcissist, trying to say, no, well, that's not it. You know, I, I, re I really didn't do um, anything wrong to that person. You know, this is what I said. Can't you see, you know, that they stole my money from me and they're saying, well, maybe you wanted them to steal the, the money. I mean, I mean, did you leave your purse by them? I mean, you know, what did you do to contribute to the, to this problem? And you're like, no, I, I didn't leave, you know, my, my purse. I think they slipped their hands while I, in my purse while I had it on my shoulder. And they're saying, oh, you know, well, you, I don't know. I just really can't blame them. I just think that you were careless. And they probably don't even believe that. But they're just saying it just to get under your skin, just poking at you. They know where all your sensitive spots at. Are and they want to keep poking. And then if you notice, they, they'll they sit back and have this the little smirk on their face. So they, they, it makes them happy because they get to see you angry and they're feeling they're in control. For instance, like 
my narcissistic mother once told me, uh, she, I was going to this church and she would say things. I'm just out of nowhere. We could be watching TV, having a good time. And this is what they'll do. Sometimes they go from zero to a hundred, like Drake said, real quick. You could be having a good time. And then out of nowhere, they'll say something like my mother said, Oh, that church you're going to with that pastor. Oh, the car he has. I bet he's just ripping everyone off. And the thing is, it was an old family car this man had. But and then when I finally understood that she was playing games games with me, you know, um, I wouldn't respond anymore. But this came later. But so after she said that about the pastor's car, I went into reacting the fence mode. You know, I'm like, oh no, that's not true. He's not that kind of person. Whereas I could have just responded, you know, by saying, oh, that's an interesting point, or mm, that's interesting, or just ignored her. That would have been responding versus reacting. But so after I went into my defense mode, as usual, she said to me, oh, Samira, you know, I just play you like a puppet. I pull you this way and I pull you that way. I, I control whichever way I want you to go. And that is true. And that's what narcissists do. They want to control your emotions. If you're feeling happy and you know, to me, they, um, a, a lot of them are not happy with themselves. They're not happy with life. They don't want to see you happy. They figure, hey, I'm I'm down. I'm depressed. I don't feel good about myself. I'm critical of myself. Well, who is this other person to be happy? Let me play with this person and change their behavior and show how much control I have and show how stupid they are. Also, uh, let's see, a narcissist likes to collect data about you. What I mean by that is they, they like to pry into your life and ask you, oh, well, um, what's going on in your life? What's new? Oh, tell me more about this. And the thing is, it's not that they really care about you. Some of us would like to believe they do, but no, they're just gaining information so that they can use. For instance, when they try to control you and they tell you, oh, you should, uh, do, you should do this with your children instead of that. Take them to this school instead of that school. And if you don't change the school, of your kids, they will some like more than likely become angry with you because who are you, their little peon in their project, not to do what they told you? They're greater, they're better than you, and so they'll become upset with you, you know, and and just really get belligerent. Like, why aren't you doing what I, you know, asked you to do? So yeah, but they collect different data about your life, about your marriage, how things are going. And they'll they'll do it so in like I said, in times of if you disagree with them, if you don't do what they say, you're not giving them the admiration that you used to. You're not seeing how great they are, how oh they're the best seamstress, oh they're just so talented, oh how beautiful they look in a dress. You're not doing that anymore. So now it's time to throw that out. Uh, throw back at you the information you gave. For instance, I saw a narcissist friend say to her brother, her brother had uh, just said how he was having a hard time with his children. And so the narcissist said something, the brother disagreed and he wasn't rude. He just said, you know, his statement of how he felt. The narcissist immediately became upset and said, you know, um, I can see why your children are having problems, you know, look at you. you. And I was thinking, wow, he just really, before the argument had opened himself up and the narcissist destroyed him because the narcissist, they, uh, an, another way to spot them is their lack of empathy. They want you to have empathy, feel sorry for them, be there for them. But then uh, they don't give you much empathy. For instance, if you're lay, you're, you know, you, you might be laid off and, uh, and I'm not saying this applies to all narcissists. They may say, oh, tough. Oh, well, what'd you, what'd you do? I'm assuming you did something, you know, to deserve it. I mean, why would they just lay you off? Excuse me. Or uh, the nar or you might uh, have a pr problem or hurt yourself and a narcissist is like, oh, well, you know, get over it. Or you may mention something in your past. And again, you'll notice the narcissist is like, oh, well, that's tough, you know, get over it. Or, uh you know, different things just to dismiss you. But the moment the narcissist has a problem or they want you to be there and uh, they have a death, they want you to bring cakes and they want you to do all this nice, great stuff for them. But you will see that they're not really doing that with, with you. They, they can, If you upset them, they can really become an ice queen. queen. But, you know, that's just how they do. 
also, uh, let's see, regarding becoming belligerent, they they do like to call names, especially if they're getting, uh, if they see that you don't like to do what they say, they might want to, they're plan, they might plan to discard you. So they, they might even say, oh my goodness, you know, I can't believe you think that way. You know, that's so dumb. Or they may start calling calling you names. Or you might uh, hear they're, they're shaming, you know, they're shaming you. Or continuing to talk about topics that, you know, like I said before, that, that for you are just off the table. And if you try to talk about a topic that they don't like, well, they just can't handle it. For instance, I was living with a narcissist who I thought was my friend <laughs> at the time. And I, you know, she would get upset with me because she had so many suggestions for me. And most of those suggestions I wouldn't take. So she didn't like that. So instead of her just coming out saying, hey, I picked you to be my project. Do what I say. You know, she wouldn't do that. She would just make these little snarky comments. For instance, if I was exercising, she'll come out of her room and say, oh, you're really not kicking your leg high enough. Oh, you're really not squatting deep enough. And, you know, I'd say like, okay, but you're not doing anything. So I'm going to get back to what I'm doing. But she would do little things like that. Or she knew at the time I had an older car or she, and she knew I had dented the car up. It looked really bad, you know. Uh, and so, oh, I, I just can't understand why you won't get a new car. I just think you deserve it. Oh, you should get a new car. Oh, my goodness, with your car. Now, this person's car looked worse than mine. But anyway, you know, and a person might say, well, the friend may be cared because they knew you were concerned about the car. But the thing was is that the would constantly bring it up. And it was just, just a poke, you know. Oh, I just don't know why you don't get a new car. Oh, you know, anything just to try to dig at you you may notice that that they'll do also that narcissists will will gaslight you this is how you know your friend might be a narcissist gaslight means they try to make you question your reality so if you call them out on the shaming you or saying nasty stuff at you or yelling at you or you're feeling like you have to walk on eggshells around them they'll say things like um, you know, if you say, hey, you know, yesterday, you know, you, you said that a person has to be dumb to have such a thought, you know, when I made my comment. And then they'll, they'll gaslighter to make you question yourself. Um, I, you know, I, I wouldn't say something like that. that. That's not even in my character. And you know good and well what happened. So they'll try to make you seem as if you're crazy. Or if you confront them, they'll say, oh, you're just so sensitive. I feel like I have to walk on eggshells. And that's really projection, meaning what they're doing to you. Now, they ascribe that to your character. You, you the person who's a friend of the narcissist, may feel like you have to walk on eggshells. And the narcissist knows that. So the narcissist will say, I feel like I have to walk around eggshells around you when really it's in reverse or they'll say you're just so sensitive you know or you're just very critical and truthfully what the narcissist is saying about you is your tell sign that that's really how they feel about themselves for instance I worked with a narcissist and w when um, everything was good it was good but then for some reason I get I, I, I noticed a change when I didn't wait for her to go on one assignment, I walked across the street and did it myself and came back because she was taking a long time. After that, everything changed, you know, because she had trained me and I guess she thought I was her project and she saw I had a mind of my own. After that, I noticed she had started lying uh, to the supervisor and the supervisor would start coming to me. Oh, um, so Myra, it's not a competition between you and, you know, the narcissistic friend. And I'm thinking, where is this coming from? And the supervisor is like, you know, you don't you, you don't have to compete with her. And I, I started to notice, you know, I go back and ask the friend, hey, I just had this conversation. You know anything about that? And the narcissistic friend was like, no, of course. No, I don't. No, I don't know where it's coming from. Then it got to the point where I was called in again for the supervisor. And I realized that the narcissist was playing games, manipulating and controlling, pulling the strings, going in line to the supervisor. So I feel she felt threatened by me at work. You know, and so she went to, you know, and she was competing with me. And so she went to the supervisor. 
supervisor telling the supervisor I was competing with her. So she started all these different lies just to keep drama going just because I wouldn't fall in line with what she wanted for me. Another thing, uh, the narcissist uh, will try to shame you or um, do a smear campaign. What that means is when you're no longer friends, or even if you are friends, if you've done something to upset the narcissist, they will do. They will go and try to get people to turn away from you. Meaning, saying, telling other friends, you know, that you're crazy, you're mean, you're malicious. They may even tell the other friends that you're lying. Um, about, you know, lying to them about certain things and then the narcissist will come back to you. And if you, um, you know, are just sitting around the narcissist, the narcissist will probably say something like, you know, everybody thinks you're crazy. They think something is wrong with you. I mean, we don't know, you know, why they, why, you know, why you're like this, you know, everyone, everyone thinks it. They'll say things like that because they're really focused on what people think. And so they, you know, it scares them that someone would think something uh, less of them. They want everyone to think they're so talented, they're so beautiful, they're, they're just so skilled. And so their fear is that people will see that um, a lot of this is just hype that they're giving. So they'll project that onto you saying, well, people see, you know, something's wrong with you and you're not who you say you are. But really it's something wrong with the narcissist's friend. And uh, they're not who they say they are. So you can't really trust uh, what what they say. They're very vengeful, uh, they very vengeful people. And uh, you know, and sometimes you know, you might not want to think in your head that you don't want to cross the individual. But the thing is, is uh, not not standing up for yourself. And continuing to go back to that relationship is another reason why they keep mistreating you because they think, well, surely if someone was treating them the way they treat you, they would have been gone a long time ago. They wouldn't allow religion to tell them that they need to forgive. No, they would have been gone a long time ago. So again, they think, oh, you deserve it. You keep coming back for more. You must love it. Also, uh, positive traits about a narcissist. The reason why people stay in the relationship. Uh, it reminds me of those <laughs> domestic violence relationships. You know, the narcissist can be funny. You know, they can be the life of the party, have great stories to tell. And you'll be like, and they, and they come off as confident people, a lot of them. So you're like, oh, you know, this person is so great. They're so energetic. You know, they're so outspoken. This is a person, you know, I want to hang out with. But really, all of that is just a facade. I find that with narcissists, they seem to be um, narcissistic friends. The females seem to be wounded little children inside. And I say that because when they begin to act out, if you don't do what they ask you and things of that nature, it's more like dealing with a child, you know, that some of them can give you a silent treatment if you're not doing what they ask you. You know, they can also be positive because, um, if you like drama, if you like gossip, oh, they got a lot of drama for you. They got a lot of gossip for you. And believe me, some of it seems so good and juicy because the narcissist is so good at it. And a lot of it is lies because if someone basically pissed them off, as a narcissist told me about, about myself, you know, um, they get pissed off. They'll start making up all types of lies and juicy gossip about people. So if you're into that, you're like, yeah, yeah, I love talking to this person because they, you know, they always have something great to tell me. So yeah, so that's my take on narcissistic friends. Uh, th this is a uh, personal experience that I'm giving you. It's also from my mental health background, but more from personal experience because believe it or not, I didn't learn much about narcissism in grad school. I mean, we touched on it briefly, but to see um, the depth of it or to actually have a client that was a narcissist, I didn't experience that. So I would just want to thank YouTube because I learned a lot about narcissism from YouTube and on the, in, in the internet. So go ahead and give me your thoughts about uh, narcissistic friends or any questions you have. Go ahead and leave it in the comment section. All right. Have a good one.